Okay, so you decided you want to publish Home Assistant on the internet, because who wouldn't? And you figured out port forwarding, but now you want to make sure that you're being safe about it. I think that's a great idea, so let's go do that. All right, so we're gonna put our Home Assistant on the internet. And to do that, we need to first port forward some ports. And I have another video that I released at the exact same time as this video that sort of walks through how to do that um, using duck DNS for dynamic DNS. Um, and then how to port forward on your router to get it all to come to Home Assistant. Um, you have to use a dynamic DNS service because SSL, when we sign up for our SSL certs, we need a domain name, okay? So we're gonna do, in this video, we're, we're gonna worry about security, securely getting our Home Assistant on the internet. And in order to do that, we're gonna do five things, right? We're gonna ensure we have good passwords. We're gonna install an SSL certificate or a TLS certificate, a certificate, okay? We're not gonna get into the, the, the nitty gritty of the certificate services and all that. We're just gonna learn how to do that. We're going to configure Home Assistant to use that certificate. We're gonna set up Home Assistant to ban IP addresses that keep trying to log on um, with bad passwords after so many tries. And then we're gonna set up a cron job to renew our certificates every so many days. Um, and that's sort of important. So um, th there's a lot of steps here. What I would recommend is you just go to my blog. All the steps are sort of written out you can go through them one by one, copy and paste all the commands, and make sure you understand what's going on. Um, okay, and there's a link down below to the blog. There's a link to um, some other resources and um, to the other video I was talking about on port forwarding. So with that being said, let's first talk about complex passwords. I know this is a boring subject. I'm just gonna spend two minutes on it. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story. I went biking. I was going from Pittsburgh to DC, and when I was in the middle of nowhere, a friend called me up, or a neighbor, really, and said, hey, your music is blaring, what's going on? And what had happened is I set up Home Assistant, set up certificates and all of that, but in order to show off, I gave some friends a password to play with it, and I made the password really weak. Well, somebody else, not a friend of mine, broke that password pretty quickly, turned all of my lights on, all of my stereo up, and then locked me out with a complex password that I couldn't get back into until I got in. So I had to have somebody come into power and just manually unplug everything. Um, so, and having a certificate will not protect you against something like that. So I, I recommend eight to 10 characters, lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and special characters. Um, you know, however you do it. You could use a password manager. Um, and I do have some other password tips in the SSH video that I did before, okay? so. The next thing, installing the SSL certificate or TLS certificate. What this does is it will encrypt communication between your home assistant and the clients that are talking to it right through the web interface. So that's what we're gonna do. It doesn't prevent people from trying to log in. It doesn't prevent people from trying passwords over and over, but it does prevent them from sort of listening to what you're doing, especially if you're on your phone, you know, in the mall on somebody's attacking things and just getting the the um, IP traffic out of the air and finding out what your username and password is to your home assistant. Um, the chances of somebody breaking your password are higher than somebody attacking your SSL cert, but it's still a very important step. So let's start by setting up our SSL certs. Okay, let's go. So the first thing you're going to do is, and, and I'm going to follow along with my on blog as well, just so that we're all on the same page. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do is make sure you're in uh, your home directory. And if you don't know how to do that, CD, that little tilde squildy thing, and that'll bring you to your home directory um, if you're not already there. And then we're gonna install something called CertBot. And CertBot is a client for Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a free SSL certification, certification um, uh, authority um, published by EFF, the Electronic Found, uh, Frontier Foundation. So they, they maintain Let's Encrypt for the SSL cert, and they put out CertBot for um, actually getting the certificates and installing them and things like that. There are many other clients you can use, and um, it's called Acme compliant. So any client that's Acme compliant, the, the Let's Encrypt SSL certificate is Acme compliant. So 
um, you can do that. We're going to use CertBot. We need to install CertBot. So mkdir and then CertBot for a directory. We're going to make a directory to put CertBot in. And then we're going to change into that directory. So cd, oh, I spelled it wrong. So mkdir CertBot, right? Uh, enter. And then we're going to change into that directory. So cd CertBot. And now we're in there. And we're going to do um, a wget and download the CertBot. Uh, installation from um, Electronic F Frontier Foundation. So to do that, wget, and that we will download https colon slash slash dl.eff download.eff.org and then slash certbot dash auto. Okay, and that's the auto client for certbot. So do that. It, there, oh, not found. I typed something wrong. HTTPS colon DL dot EFF dot org dot cert bot dot AUTO. Spelled it wrong. There you go. So it downloaded it. We have it. It's in our directory. We do an LS. There it is, cert bot. Okay. Now we have to make it um, executable, just like we've done in some other videos. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. Um, chmod, change mode, and then it's A plus X. Uh, and then, oops, lowercase, and then cert bot dash auto. And now that is executable um, for us and on the system. Okay. Now it's pretty easy from here. We what you do need to have is a domain name for um, for your domain, and we did the video again from. Um, from DuckDNS. So if you don't have that, now's a good time to, to stop and go get that, watch that other video, and come back. Okay, so I have a command here. Just go ahead and copy and paste it. I will put it in the, the notes below as well. And we need to do a couple of changes to that command, right? So um, the first thing we want to do is put our email address in here. So I'm going to do um, Paul at diyautomate.me and then your domain including the DuckDNS or whatever the, the domain you're using right so mine is going to be diyautomate.duckdns.com or yeah, .org. Um, the other the other things that we're doing here is it's you can see it's going to cert, cert only so it's not going to try to install anything um, it's not going to try to renew we're getting standalone certificates and then the preferred challenges, we're using HTTP 01, which means it's going to do a challenge to your home assistant server to make sure you actually control that server um, on port 80. And that's important because we're going to eventually set it up so that it can auto renew and it's going to always auto renew on that same port and your home assistant server is going to be on port 443, right? So we need those two ports to be available for this to work. Eventually I'll come back and do a video that's less Home Assistant um, specific that'll show you how to use DNS text records to um, auto renew a whole bunch of servers without having to stop services and things. But for now, this is what we're going to do. So go ahead and, and type all that in, make sure you're, you you got everything right, and then enter. And it'll take it a minute, but it'll go through and it's going to it's going to check and make sure that your server works right and that everything is up to date. If during the installation you get something asking you you know that you can use disk space just go ahead and say yes um, that's just making sure that you're agreeing to allow the cert bot to take up disk space for all its libraries and everything it's creating a python virtual directory for it to run in um, it's just the way that it sort of handles everything so go ahead and hit yes just keep going that's exactly the way it should be um, and then let it keep installing so for me the magic of editing it took about 10 minutes to get here and all of this is is asking you to in to agree to the terms and service so Agree, enter, and keep going. Would you be willing to share your email address with EFF, the Electronic Fa Frontier Foundation? They already have my address, so that's totally up to you. Hit yes, it'll take it another couple of minutes here, and then we'll be good to go. It's Now it's actually doing the challenge to my domain to make sure that I own the server, right? So everything's been installed. Now it's actually um, getting the certificate, generating the keys, 
and then putting the keys on my system. Remember, we said standalone, which means it is putting its own standalone server to do all this. It's not a different web server. It's not using Apache or something. Um, and then we told it that we wanted to um, to to actually just copy the the stuff locally, the, the certificates locally, and then and then stop and not try to install them into anything. So that's what it did. We're done. To get up to this point, 10, 15 minutes, depending on your setup, your network speed and all that, um, and which type of pie you're using, all that. But but now we're there. Now we have um, now we have what we need. So next step is to go and check out our certificates and to set some permissions on them. And to do that, um, we're actually going to CD to um, etc. Um, let's encrypt. And then ls there, and you can see there's there's a bunch of directories there. We're going to change the permission on a couple of these directories, right? So um, sudo and then chmod and then 755. And that's going to give you execute permissions and everybody else sort of read permissions. Uh, and then um, etc. And let's encrypt. And we're going to do it to the live directory. And we're going to do it to the archive directory. Um, and then while we're in here, um, now that should be good enough. So that, that's good. So the live directory and the archive directory. Um, that's it. We have certificates now. If you go into one of those directories, so CD live, you'll see there's um, a duck DNS dot or your, your domain.duckdns.org directory. Go ahead and CD into that. So for me, it's diyautomate.duckdns.org. And then you'll be able to see your certificates. And there's um, your private key and then your full chain, which is tells everybody where your certificate authority is and um, your cert itself, which has your public key part of it. Um, your cert is what gets published to the internet and um, Let's Encrypt has a copy of that and your private key never leaves your server. It gets created on your server um, and that's it. So Let's Encrypt, the service doesn't create that. The client creates it on your server. So it's, it's ultra secure. That's why there's, the permissions are locked down even to you up front. Um, to make sure that this is secure. Because if you were taking payment information, all that, um, you want this to be super secure. Um, but that's it, now we have certificates. Easy enough. So the next thing we're gonna do is to set up auto renewing of the certificates. By default, the certificates um, need to be renewed every 90 days, can be renewed after 60 days, unless you force it. Um, but we can actually try to renew it every day and then when it hits that mark where it can be renewed, it will just renew. And the way we do this is cron. Cron is a system scheduler. And cron tab is a part of the system scheduler that will run commands um, at a time that you say under your, um, under your user credentials. Uh, so, and that's important, right? Because everything's done under your user credentials. It's all in your home drive. We want it, we want it under your user credentials and that's where cron tab comes in. And it's a fairly easy thing to do. Uh, what we're going to do here is actually go ahead and cron tab dash e, right? And what that is cron tab dash edit. If you have not used cron tab before, which I have, it will ask you which editor you want to use. Uh, we've used nano up till now. Nano is a choice. That's the one I would recommend. But you know, if you want to use a different editor, feel free. It will remember your choice and it won't ask you the next time you use CronTab, right? And we've used CronTab when we set up the uh, DuckDNS task to automatically keep uh, giving our, I our IP address to DuckDNS um, if you watch that video. So here's the, the command for renewing. And what this is basically saying is, you know, at zero minutes, 1300 hours, right? So at one o'clock PM, uh, go ahead and run this command and this command is basically running cert bot auto under your home directory um, renew the certificate and do it quietly all right so once that's in there just all the other configuration and everything is saved from when you actually created um, the certificate originally it'll use some files that it created in the background so you don't have to tell it any information 
just go ahead and renew and it will do it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Control X to save that, Y, and boom. Now we have a scheduled task that'll run every day and try to renew our certificate. It's going to try to renew it on port 80 and I'm gonna prove that to you. Um, I think it's something that you want to see. So we're gonna bring up actually two different um, uh, SSH sessions here, right? So that we can run sort of two different um, two different commands at the same time. So the first one we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and run that renewal um, that renewal uh, command, right? But when we do it, we are going to run it. Whoops! I don't know why that did that. Oh, I did not copy that right. So just give me a second. So copy this. We're going to go ahead and run this command, but instead of quiet we are gonna run it with a different flag and that flag is dry run. So dash dash dry dash run, right? But don't, don't hit enter yet. I wanna show you another command really quick. Um, and that command um, is netstat, right? So if you run netstat pl or netstat pln, you will be able to see, I'm just gonna do pl, you will be able to see the, um, the ports that are now listening. So you can see 8123 and that's home assistant is listening right now. SSH is listening. There's something listening on some of these other ports. There's different um, switches you can use to make it look better or worse. Um, PLN, I think, is the quickest. Um, and you can see, you know, again, all these ports are now listening, and they're supposed to be. A port is basically an address, so your computer has an IP address, right? 192.167.05. But there's a lot of different things running on that, on your one computer. So the way that we know that the traffic gets to the service or the program that is running and listening for that is the programs are assigned ports, just like an apartment building has an apartment number, right? So everything comes to that one apartment building, but then it knows your specific mail goes to your apartment number. A port is like an apartment number, right? So when we go ahead and we run this command to renew on a dry run, and a dry run basically what it does is it says, hey, go through the renewal process, but don't actually renew it. Um, and it, it'll do the whole thing. One of the things it does when it's doing that is it's going to spin up a, um, a web server or a server listening on port 80. And I'll show you where that is. Cert not due for renewal, that's fine. You can see waiting for verification. When it's rate waiting for verification, we run that net stack command and we should be able to come and see now port 80 is there, right? So it was listening on port 80, nothing has been saved, that's done. Um, I hope this is making sense to you. We run this again, net stat, and you'll see port 80 is now gone, right? There is no port 80 there. So that's a secure way to do it. You're leaving port 80. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm asking you to leave port 80 open on your router. And that might seem a little dangerous, but there's nothing listening on the other side except for the very small window when the renewal is happening. So I hope that makes some sense. Um, so now we have a certificate. We have it renewing. Uh, we know how it's renewing and when it's renewing. The next thing we have to do is go and have um, Home Assistant use that certificate. And it's a fairly easy and straightforward thing to do. Um, so let's get rid of this and let's bring up the Home Assistant YAML file. Um, we'll do that. And you'll see I have this pre-populated with a couple of commands, right? So um, you need these two commands in your YAML file, SSL underscore certificate and SSL underscore key. And each one of these points to um, your folder, remember your folder, so you're gonna to have to change that to be your domain. And then the full chain is the chain that leads back to Let's Encrypt so people can find your public key if they need to, um, if, they, if they can't get it from you. And then your private key, which you are the only one that has that, right? So you're telling Let's Encrypt, here's where the private key is to make sure that the public key that somebody gets from this is valid. So these are the two things that you need to make all of this work. And then we can go ahead and we can um, save our file. I'm gonna take that space out. Um, and then, you know, the thing that we always do is, we just uh, did all this, oops, wrong window, sorry. We're gonna go to the other window. And then you should see, uh, we're gonna check our config. It's just easier for me to hit up than to retype it and spell it wrong. Everything looks green. We go through and we restart our service. Once our service has been restarted, um, Home Assistant is now using these certificates, right? So if we go to our Home Assistant site on our, with 
our actual domain name now, right? You can see this is secure. It's using HTTPS, right? So you can type in your name, HTTPS colon slash slash your domain name and log into your home assistant server. And you should see this. And this is all good stuff. It's secure, which means it's using your certificates. It didn't give you any certificate validation errors, which if, if your certificate wasn't, wasn't um, right, it, the web browser would come up and say, hey, there's something wrong with the certificate. You might not want to trust it. It didn't do that. That's good. And it let us in. And now we can get to this from anywhere on the internet. We are now an internet worldwide entity um, for our home assistant, which is, which is great. Um, but there's one more thing I recommend you doing. Uh, so right now, what we've done up to now is we have put ourselves on the internet. We've made our communication to our server encrypted. We've done a good password, right? So the one last thing I would really suggest, and I said this earlier, is changing it so that if somebody tries to log onto the server more than, you know, five, six, ten times with invalid passwords from the same IP address, that IP address then gets banned, right? So that they can't keep trying. Because what will happen is, what, what a password attack is, is they just have this huge massive file of passwords and it starts with the letter A and A, 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 B, A, C, and then all of the, you know, names and numbers and everything in the dictionary and whatever. And then it just tries those passwords one after the other, after the other, after the other. Um, and if you let it sit there long enough and don't block it, eventually it will find your password. Um, the longer passwords will take a lot longer to find, but it will do it. So what I suggest is you do what's called IP banning, meaning if somebody tries with the wrong password more than X amount of times, do not allow that password into my system anymore, even to try to run a password, even to try to log in. Okay, and it's fairly easy to do because it's built into HA, Home Assistant, right? There's, a, there's another way to do it that's built into the operating system. I'm gonna show you that another time because that's something we can use on all of our Linux uh, machines, whether it's MQTT server, whether it's Home Assistant, whether it's, you know, whatever, another web server. There's a way to do it so that, you know, that it's done in the operating system itself. But for now, we're gonna do it as part of Home Assistant. So in order to do that, it's very easy. Just go ahead and open up your configuration.yaml file again. Uh, mine's here. And there's just two things that you need to copy in there. Um, and that is ipban underscore enabled. Um, and it's, it's still in the HTTP component, right? So um, ip underscore ban underscore enabled. And then true with a capital T. So that's saying, yes, we want to turn that function on that bans IPs if they keep trying. And we have to tell the IP ban how many times people can try before we lock them out. So login underscore attempts underscore threshold. And then colon, and then however many you're comfortable with. I recommend somewhere between five, 10 to 15. If they're not gonna guess it in those first few few tries, unless you have a really weak password. Uh, but what you don't want to do is type in the wrong, you forget your password, you type it in a few times and you lock yourself out. So you want to give yourself a little bit of leeway, just not too much leeway. Um, for me, I'm going to do five, hit enter, right? And then we're going to go ahead and save this and go through our little process here where we, um, where we make sure that the config is right and it should be here. Restart our system. And then the way that you could test this, and I'm not gonna go and, and do that for this video, but you could, you know, if you have a, a, a smartphone, take your smartphone off of your network, right? And then try to log in from the internet, but put in the wrong password that many times, and you'll see that it locks it out. Um, it, works, it works fine. It works great every time. Um, so I, th I think that's it. We've covered a lot. This is a kind of a long video. Again, I, you know, I go to the blog, look at those commands. This isn't, I run through it really fast, I think for something that's complicated um, or with this, you know, nuanced of commands. Um, if you have questions, put them down below. We will try to, or I will try to answer them and hopefully others will help. Uh, as always, subscribe, tell your roommate, tell your girlfriend, your mother, your everybody. Um, yeah, but subscribe and hit the little notify button because, you know, that's what all the YouTube people tell you to do.
if you don't, it's okay. No pressure. Um, and then, uh, yeah, keep automating. And I will see you soon because, you know, I'm going to keep automating too. Bye.